Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you here on this wonderful Sunday morning. Hey, if this is your first time here at The Rocks, if you're new, then I just want to say a very, very special welcome to you. We're so glad that you're here. And hey, if you're looking around and you're wondering where our 18 to 30 year olds are, well, this weekend is their young adults winter camp. So they're all at Serpentine Falls having the time of their life. I know because Dev and I went to visit them yesterday and they're having an absolute blast. And, but you know when you go somewhere and you really realize that you're really too old to be there? Well, that happened to me yesterday because one of the games that they were playing was that a member from each team, they had to come and they had to chug down a smoothie. Okay, now that sounds okay until you realize what was actually in this smoothie. It was a cheeseburger, fries and coke all blended together and the first person to chug it all down actually won. And I thought, may I am way too old to be here. That is disgusting. But the good news here this morning is that you are not too old, you're not too young to be here. You are exactly right and we're so glad that you decided to join us here today. And uh, I was talking to the new people just a few minutes ago. I just want to let you know about a space that we designed especially with you in mind. And it's called our New Guest Lounge. And you can find it outside those auditorium doors just to your right hand side. And at the end of the gathering, there'll be a team of people who'd love to connect with you, love to chat with you and get to know you a little bit better. So do head over there at the end. Now in here, we'll be here for about 75 minutes in total. And in just a few moments, Michael and the team, they're gonna lead us in a few songs. The words are gonna be coming up on the screen and we'd love for you to clap along with us, love for you to sing along with us and then just enjoy yourself. And we'd love for you to have a good time. But right now, why don't you stand up on your feet, say hello to a few people around you and ask them, would you drink a cheeseburger smoothie? Well, I'm glad that you're here. We're going to sing a few songs today. And the first song tells us about who you were and what we are doing right now because of the grace of Jesus Christ. Come on. They need my shame. Sing with me. I could carry that kind of weight. It was mine. Till I met you Come on everybody, clap your hands together I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide But it was my turn Till I
your life story, my life story. song together let's be reminded that God always be there for us his love is consistently available for us at every time of our life I've been strong and I've been broken within the moment I've been faithful to tall and I have crumbled in the same breath I have wrestled and I have trembled to
Father, we receive your grace. We receive your love. We receive the authority of King with the name, above all names, Jesus Christ, King of all kings. Whatever that we say on earth, we bind on heaven as well, God. So God, we declare today that we receive. We're not going to strive for friendship, but we're going to open our hearts, open our minds, open our hands to receive what's already been won on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the rocks. Let's declare this together. When we lift up our voice and shout, something happened in the atmosphere. Sing with me. Oh, when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has.
lift up the name of Jesus in this place, the name of the one who has conquered it all. Every battle, every obstacle, every mountain has been laid waste because at the name of Jesus, the Son of God, every name shall bow, every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. Father God, we thank you so much this morning that whatever we face in our lives, whatever obstacle that comes our way, we have an ultimate victor. We have an ultimate champion, the ultimate redeemer. We have the ultimate savior, the ultimate one who has conquered every sin. He has conquered death. He has conquered the grave. And we now stand and live in the victory that Jesus Christ has won for us. Is anyone grateful for the victory of Jesus this morning? Is anyone thankful that we have a champion in heaven who is fighting on our behalf? Is anyone thankful that we can live in victory because God says that we are conquerors and that we are more than enough for all that He has called us to do? Come on, if you believe that, can you sing this one more time? to be praised. Amazing. I'm going to invite you to take your seats where you are. Hey, wasn't that awesome? I love that you and I, we get to come together regardless of whatever's going on in our lives, regardless of what obstacles we're facing. We get to come together at this time every Sunday as a body of believers, as people, as brothers and sisters, as a family, and we get to raise the name of Jesus high. We get to fix our eyes and fix our faith on Jesus Christ once again. And I don't know about you, but I love that. That is my favorite time of the week. And guess what? We're only just getting started. Amazing. So I want to talk to you about something that you may have seen on your way down Cecil Avenue this morning. I don't know maybe if you drove down Cecil Avenue or maybe you walked into church this morning, but maybe you noticed that we have a huge banner on our fence that says, no perfect people allowed. And if you notice that, you'll know that that's not just a slogan for us. It's not just something that we put on a banner on our fence, but actually it's something that we're really passionate about. It's something that we really believe in here at The Rocks. Because you see, we don't think that any of us are perfect. We're all in need of God's love and grace to live this journey that we call life. And if you thought that church was a place you only came to after you got your life sorted, I want to let you know this morning that that's not the case at all. You know, all of us, like I said, we're not perfect. We're all on a journey and we keep transforming with God's grace. And, you know, what we found is that our God, He's so amazing that He loves us exactly as we are. And you this morning, I want to let you know that you're welcome here exactly as you are as well. But the fantastic thing is that what we found is that God loves us as we are, but He loves us too much to leave us as we are. And so we're all a part of this beautiful journey of transformation that God invites us into. And today, that invitation is open for you as well. Now, speaking of today, we are starting a brand new sermon series. And we have our very own lead pastor, Pastor Daniel Indrajaya, back. And he is going to come and bring an awesome word this morning. And our series that we're starting is titled, Stop Going to Church. I know, pretty controversial. What does that mean? Does that mean you need to come to church next Sunday? I don't know, but Pastor Daniel is going to let you know. So make sure you're paying attention. But can I encourage us right from the get-go? Can we lean in? Can we get really expectant and draw out and take hold of everything that God has to say to us through Him? Fantastic. Well, we're going to move on in our gathering and we're going to continue our worship by coming around our giving. And if this is your first time here, if you're new to church or if you're a guest with us, I just want to let you know that you are under no obligation at 
all to give. You know, this moment is for us who call ourselves church family, who call ourselves Christians. We consider it our joy and indeed our privilege to be able to give to God. Uh, but of course, if you'd like to do so, then you're more than welcome to join us. There's a few ways you can give this morning. The ways to give will be up behind me on the screen. The easiest way to do is to automate your giving and head to the rocks.info. You can give online or you can use one of the envelopes that you would have found on your seat as you walked in. Just fill in your details and you can pop it in the bucket that's going to come your way in a few short moments. Well, as you're preparing to do that, I just want to take a few minutes to say a huge, huge heartfelt thank you to all of you, to so many of you who give so generously week in and week out. You know, we are able to create spaces just like this one only because of your generosity. And, you know, the Bible talks a lot about giving. It talks a lot about generosity. And um, one of my favorite scriptures is where it says, God loves a cheerful giver. You know, I love that. And for me, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't find it too hard to be generous towards God because the way I see it, everything I have in my life is a gift from God. Everything I have is a blessing from Him. So why would I withhold anything from the one who's given me everything? And so I don't find it too difficult to be generous towards God. But let me tell you where I struggle sometimes. I struggle in my giving sometimes because sometimes my action doesn't always match my intention. My action doesn't always match my intention. Um, let me illustrate. Last week, someone gave Dev and I a beautiful box of cupcakes. It was so decadent. It was so exquisite. It was almost too pretty to eat. And my intention was, Pastor Daniel, that I was going to be only going to eat half of one. But something happened, you see, and I stumbled and I fell into the box of cupcakes and I ended up eating three. So my intention clearly did not match my action. And it's the same thing when it comes to my giving sometimes. I'm cheerful about giving. I want to give. I'm excited about giving. But sometimes I forget. Sometimes I procrastinate. Sometimes I leave it till later. And then when the moment comes, I realize that I don't have as much as I wanted to give. My intention of giving doesn't always match my action of giving. And so that's why I love that in this church, we don't teach tithing. We teach priority percentage giving which means that the first thing that we do with everything coming in is that we prioritize giving to God. And we save some that we decide to save, and then we live on the rest. We give, we save, and we live. And that's an incredible principle that has changed and transformed mine and Dev's lives. And, you know, perhaps for you this morning, as you think about your giving and think about how it could bless you, I found that this is pretty practical but it's also very spiritual because it enables us to be good stewards of everything God has blessed us with. So it's something to think about and perhaps it's something that you want to talk around your family with and think about how you can prioritize God when it comes to blessing Him and being generous in your lives. Amazing. Well, thank you, host team. You can start releasing the buckets now. And while that is happening, here's John to tell us everything that's coming up in the life of our church. Hey everyone, welcome to The Rocks. My name is John and I would like to extend my warmest welcome to you all here today. Straight after this, we're going to be listening to an inspiring message that we're praying will encourage you, challenge you, and uplift you. But before we do so, we're going to see what's happening around the life of our church. Let's take a look. If this is your first time here today, I want you to know that one of the things we say around here, The Rocks is a place where you can belong before you believe. We are so excited that you are joining us here today, which is why we made a new guest lounge especially for you. This is a place to go if you'd like to find out more about us and what we do here. There are some people there that would love to meet you over free coffee, and we also have a small gift for you to take home too, so be sure to stop by and say hello after the gathering here today. Every week at The Rocks, there are volunteers who play a crucial part in reaching people far from God by serving on a variety of different platforms. Joining a ministry team stretches your faith and allows you to experience God in a whole new way. Help play a part in growing this generation and the next by using your gifts and talents to join a ministry team by signing up at the rocks.info or the connection desk after the gathering here today. Starting this Tuesday, the 6th of August, we'll be having Follow, a six week small group for those who wanna follow God's call to explore deeper your faith with Jesus. Follows for those who have already completed Answer and cover spiritual disciplines and practical ways we can actively seek God in our day to day lives. Please sign up at the connection desk or on the rocks.info to let us know you're interested. Praise and worship unlocks the deepest depths of our spirit to connect and be moved by God. 
Tonight at 5 p.m., we'll be gathering together for a night of worship to lift the name of Jesus. We're gathering to see breakthrough, to restore faith, to raise hands and surrender, and to glorify God. It's going to be nothing short but powerful, and there's a seat with your name on it. Thanks again for being with us here today. To keep in touch with everything happening around the rocks, you can find updates in some of our winning stories on Facebook and Instagram by searching the handle at The Rocks Perth. If you have questions about anything you've heard today, or just want to find out more about our church, stop by the Connection Desk or visit us online at therocks.church. God is tapping me on the shoulder. I'm here for something more. And I know it. I feel it. I'm no longer willing to remain here and be a spectator. I need to get better. It's no longer enough for me to just sit and listen. He's calling me. And I have to wonder, is he calling you too? Good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Indrajaya. I'm one of the pastors here at The Rocks. Let me extend my personal welcome to all of you here this morning, especially for those of you who are newer to the church. Um, I don't want to take for granted that you choose to spend your Sunday morning here with us, and I think that's super. That's amazing. I also want to welcome our YouTube viewers and podcast listeners joining in from all over the world. Thanks for joining in as well. Hey, as Sid has already mentioned, we are starting a brand new two-part short message series that we're calling Stop Going to Church. But before I dive in, let me encourage you to come back tonight for a night of worship. It's going to be fantastic. I love singing that new song, You Are My Champion. I felt like, you know, my, my faith has been restored in that few minutes when, while I was singing that song. Uh, it's amazing. So, Please, I want to encourage you to come back and uh, keep praying for John Atkinson, the guy you saw in the video, and the young adults who are having a, a YA camp as we speak right now. I'm wearing their awesome merch. Look at this. The theme this year is Citizen, and they're going to come back and join us for the 5 p.m. gathering if you want to welcome them, if you want to encourage them. Uh, and I think John made so much you know, so many merch, there will be some available for sale as well if you like what you see right here. The two reasons why this sweater looks really good, number one is great design, number two is the person wearing it, obviously, right? So if you <laughs> please make sure you get some. All right. Hey, um, when you talk to the people in our culture, um, what comes to their mind, you think, when they think of the word church. When people ask you your relationship with church, what question do they ask? Where do you go to church? Which church do you belong to? Where is your church, right? Uh, for most people in our culture, church is a destination. Church is a place that you go to. Sometimes it involves a building. You know, while that is a common understanding of church in our culture today, but do you know that it's not the actual meaning of the word church? I want to read you a verse from uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Uh, this is when Barnabas met up with Paul. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. He was still Saul at the time. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church. Now, if church means a building, this phrase would read funny, then it would read Barnabas and Saul met with a building. It doesn't make sense, right? But they taught a great num numbers of people because church is, that's it, church is people. Actually, in the Greek, the word church comes from this Greek word ekklesia. It's actually a compound word from two words, ek meaning out, from which we get the word exit, and kaleo, meaning called or called out. So literally, the word church means called out, people who are called out. And the assumption is they are called out for 
a purpose. They are called out for a reason. Now, if you've been all around social media, you would find this phrase all over Instagram and Facebook. It's very popular these days. And the phrase goes something like this, stop going to church, be the church. All right? Now, while I understand in context what it's saying, I think I understand what it's saying, unfortunately, a lot of people have taken this out of context to give them the permission, to give them the out to not go to church at all. Is that what we're saying? Uh, and you know, just a quick search on Google. Uh, I, I, I Google the word, stop going to church or don't go to church. You know how many hits I have? Close to 700 million hits on the phrase, stop going to church or don't go to church. You search for uh, the same phrase in YouTube. This is what I came up with. This is from YouTube search. Why I don't go to church anymore. Why we stop going to church. 12 reasons why I stop going to church. Why I stop going to church. You know, like all these reasons. People think because church is not a building and they are right in saying so. Because church is not a destination. They understand that church is people. That Give them the reason, that's why I don't like to go to church, you see? That's why I don't want to go to church. Is that the right interpretation of what the church should be or what the church means, right? I understand going to church doesn't automatically make you spiritual. I got that. Going to church doesn't automatically make you a better husband or a better wife. I understand that. You know, I understand nowadays you can catch church online as well. And I think some, sometimes there's a good reason for that. But let me tell you, I want you to come back next week because next week I'm going to argue with you. In order for you to be the church, you need to go to church. All right? And not for the reason that you think either. So make sure you come back next week for the second part of this sermon series. But for now, let me just tackle this very important question before we continue. And the question is this, why is it important for us to be the church? Why is it important for us to be the church? I want to read you a story, uh, an amazing story in the life of Jesus recorded to us by one of his disciples, Matthew. Matthew used to be a tax collector, you know. He was despised by the society and then Jesus took him on. Jesus believed in him and he left everything to follow Jesus, uh, which goes to show that whoever you are, you know, you are always welcome by Jesus. You know, you're always welcome to look for Jesus, and Jesus will never shoo you away. Jesus will always welcome you with open arms. And, and that's what he did with Matthew. And Matthew recorded this incident in the life of Jesus. If you grew up in church, you would know this story. It's very powerful, and I think this is pivotal in the history of our church, all right? I want to read from Matthew chapter 17, uh, just the first four verses of this, this passage. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. I always say this, when you read the Bible, you have to read it in context. You cannot take the Bible out of its context. So as soon as you read the word six days later, the question that you need to ask is, what happened six days earlier? All right, what happened six days earlier? And you don't you don't have to go too far. You just need to go one chapter back to find out what happened six days earlier. This is very powerful, all right? From that time on, Jesus began. This is what happened six days earlier. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. So the last six days, in the last few days of his ministry, he's been talking about this all the time. By the way, this is one of the reasons why I believe in Jesus. And, you know, if you are searching, if you are exploring faith, let me tell you, when someone can predict their own death and resurrection and actually pull it off, and Stanley says this, you want to believe whatever that he says, right? I mean, he did it. You know, he not only predicted it, it's going to happen. He, it actually happened. So he's been saying this for the last few days to his closest friends, to his closest followers. So let's go back to our passage again. By the way, I preached this you know, just before we moved into this building, and I'm telling you, I felt like God wants us to reread this again and understand this again, and it's important for us as we continue to grow as a church. Man, this is so pivotal, okay? So here we go. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John. These are his three closest followers. Jesus has his three, he has his 12 apostles, and he has his 70 disciples, 
all right? And these are the three closest friends that he got and led them to a high mountain to be alone. And as the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became, became as white as light. And suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Now, I have to stop right here and explain to you what happened because otherwise, if I don't stop and explain, verse 4, the next verse will not make sense to you. All right? This is what happened. If you know anything about Judaism, if you know anything about the Hebrew Bible, you know that Moses and Elijah, they are the rock stars for the Jewish people. They are the superheroes. They are the superstars of the Jewish people. Peter, James, and John, they grew up listening about these guys, how Moses led the people of Israel from Egypt, how Elijah defeated 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. You know, these, were, these guys are the heroes of the faith. And you can imagine how excited Peter and, and, and the rest of these, the apostles, James and John, when they saw Jesus and um, Moses and Elijah. And this is what happened next, all right? Verse 4, Peter said to Jesus, Lord... Lord, it's so good. It's good for us to be here. You know, he even tried to bribe Jesus. If you wish, I put up three shelters. I, I do all the work. You don't have to worry about anything. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with Peter wanting to stay there forever, right? I mean, you can just imagine. You are up on the mountaintop with Jesus, the Son of God. God, can you imagine? Wow, that, that alone is just super amazing. Am I right? But this time, it was even better because Jesus, for the first time, at least, you know, from the point of view of Peter, Jesus was actually being transformed. He was being transfigured into something super special. His face shone like the sun. His clothes were shining as light and like Wow, you can imagine the thickness of the atmosphere, the glory, the weight uh, the, of the atmosphere at the time. It was super amazing. And on top of that, Moses and Elijah were making guest appearances. Man, Peter, he was like in an all-star game. He was like a fat kid in a donut store. You know, like, this is amazing. Jesus, can we stay here forever? Please, let us stay here forever. It's like Jaden when I took him to Bali when he was a kid. Dad, can we stay in Bali forever? This is super. This is amazing. And, and Peter was not wrong in thinking that way. Let me ask you, who took them to that, mount, to that mountaintop experience in the first place? It was Jesus. So in other words, Jesus wanted them to have that kind of experience. Jesus wanted Peter, James, and John to have that genuine encounter with the glory of God that was super amazing at the time. You know, you won't hear it from this pulpit. You won't hear it from me that God is out to get you. No, no, no. God is out to bless you. Yeah, sometimes God disciplines us for our own good and all that. Sometimes God allows suffering to come in our, in our life for a reason that we don't always understand. But let me tell you, if you think that God is out to get you, you're wrong. God is out there to bless you, to take you to a mountaintop experience, to a genuine relationship with Him that is not fake, that is real, that is based on His glory itself. You know, that is who our God is, you know. So don't, uh, don't misunderstand our God. He is a good God. He's an amazing God. He's the God who wants to take you to that mountaintop experience. You know, we didn't read or we couldn't read what Jesus' response was to Peter because Matthew didn't record what he said to Peter in response to this request from Peter because not everything Jesus did and said was recorded in our Bible. But if I could use my imagination, you know, if I could imagine how Jesus would respond uh, to Peter at this time, Jesus would probably say something like this. He said, Peter, I know it's so good, isn't it? You know, I took you here, remember? You know, I wanted you to feel this mountaintop experience. But Peter, guess what? We can't stay here forever. We can't just enjoy this experience for ourselves. Remember what I told you six days ago, Peter? And I've been saying this ever since. I came to this world for a reason. God, my heavenly Father, has given me a mission. And my mission is to save the people from their sin. I came here to die, Peter. 
for the sins of the world. I came for the people. We can't enjoy this experience just for ourselves. And let me tell you, Peter, you can't enjoy this experience, experience for yourself either. You can't stay here forever either, Peter. Let me tell you why. Because there's a man in Jerusalem. He's a beggar begging at the temple gate. He's been crippled from birth, and he's going to ask you for money. And this is what you're going to say to him. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. And that man, Peter, is going to walk for the first time in his life, and he's going to turn the whole town on its ear. And that's why, Peter, you can't enjoy this moment just for yourself. You're going to meet a woman. She's an amazing woman. Her name is Dorcas. She lives in Joppa. She's a seamstress. She's very generous. But she would die prematurely. And Peter, you would go to her, and, and while the friends were weeping and crying, you're going to go to her room. You're going to pray over her, and she's going to be raised to life because of your prayer. That's why you cannot just enjoy this mountaintop experience for yourself. You're going to meet a man. His name is Cornelius. He's a Roman. He's Italian. But he's stationed in Israel. He's been worshiping the false idol for the, all of his life. But he's searching for the one true God. And Peter, you're going to come to him. You're going to preach the gospel to him. And he's going to be the first Gentile convert that believed in me. And it's going to change the face of whole, the whole church history. That's why Peter... You cannot enjoy this mountaintop experience just for yourself. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, you're going to preach, and 3,000 people are going to believe me because of you. You don't even know that you have that kind of power. You don't even know that you have this within you, that you're able to speak in such authority and power that 3,000 people are going to be safe. And a few months later, you're going to do the same, and this time 5,000 people are going to be safe. That's why, Peter, you cannot just enjoy this for yourself. We have a mission to do. We have a mission to do. And let me tell you, I feel like this is the season for us as the rocks to realize this. More and more, if, if Jesus were to say to us right now what I imagine he said to Peter in response to that, you know, mountaintop experience is great uh, that you are here. Jesus would say that to us. It's great that you come here every week enjoying the presence of God, the praise and worship, you know, the powerful sermon that we preach here every Sunday that's practical and relevant and changing your mind, bringing you closer to God. It's awesome, all of that. But Jesus would probably say to you what I imagine he said to Peter, you have to stop just going to church for your enjoyment. You have to stop just going to church for your benefit. You have to stop just going to church because of what you can get out of it. You have to start to be the church where you are in your community every single day because that is what the church is. That is what the church is. You know, Paul would say the same thing to you. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, Paul says this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Do you know the reason why you are redeemed from your sins? The reason why Jesus came to save us from our sins is not just to take us to heaven. That's part of it, and that's wonderful. Not just to give us eternal life, and, and that's what happened when you put your faith in Jesus. You have eternal life, but that's not the only reason. Look at the last part of Ephesians 2 10. So that, that's a purpose statement. The reason why you are made anew in Christ Jesus is so that we can do what? The good things He planned for us long ago. So God is saying to you right now, you're not here to just take up space. Davinda, you are here for a reason. There's power in you that you don't realize you have. And there are people that only you can influence. Right? Right? You know, same thing, Lily, you can't just stay here and enjoy this experience for yourself. You have to be out there in your community, in your workplace, because there are people in your office that only you can influence, people who have been marked by God for you to influence, to make a difference in their life for eternity. And that's why it's so important for us to realize this as a church more and more. Before we move even, you know, further along in our journey of faith together as a church family, 
This is us, all right? Church is not just something that we go to. Church is who we are. And if you're wondering what that good work is, of course, it takes on many shape and form. But the main thing, I believe, the reason why God gives you the Holy Spirit is this. This is the history of, our, of the church. Acts 1 verse 8, this is the pivotal point in the history of the church. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, uh, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We are to be the witnesses of Jesus Christ where we are. This is our Jerusalem. Cannington. Canning is our Jerusalem. Perth is our Jerusalem. We have Australia. That's our Samaria. You know, that's our Judea, our Samaria. And then we have the ends of the earth. That's why we, we emphasize missions in this church. So we want to increase our missions budget because we are here for a purpose. We're not here to just play games. We're not here to just entertain ourselves. There's a mission, an important mission for us to do. The question is, how do we work that out? How do we be the church? I want to show you a video. Maybe for some of you, this is how you be the church. Let's watch this. Now, Hindus, they believe in many gods, but we know what the Bible says about one God. Jesus. Jesus is the best. Jesus wants to save you and show you the way. He is the way. Yes, I bring Jesus to you Hindus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is awesome, son of God. He'll set you free from this idolatry. God will hear your prayers if you turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus Christ. Wicked, wicked, wicked. God will send judgment if you don't come God will send his judgment, Molly. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, says the Lord. You're breaking God's law. You're breaking God's law. Repent. Repent. Time is short. You can't keep worshiping idols and expecting God to bless you. God will destroy your idols, Bali. God will destroy your idols, Bali. God is nowhere near your celebrations. God calls you to turn. Stop bowing before these idols. Turn to Jesus Christ. And that goes on and on for a lot more minutes than that. Is that how you be the church? You know, unless you've been living under the rock, you have heard about this guy in social media lately. Now, before I say anything that, you know, I know the church is divided over this issue, let me just say this. I really respect uh, Israel Folau for his courage in standing up for his faith, his courage in standing up for Jesus. I admire, honestly, people like him, Margaret Court, and, and the rest of the Christians who, who are so bold in speaking out uh, for God. That, to me, that's amazing. I mean, many of us can learn from the courage that these people have, all right? And, and number two, I really believe that freedom of religion, freedom of speech is what we have to fight for in a free land like Australia. This is something that we have to fight for, for sure. But I'm not sure if this is how, this is the best way for us to be the church. Remember what Jesus says in John 3, 17, I have come to this world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And, and, and Paul says this, and this is something amazing. Not too many Christians know about this verse, but Paul says this, um, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church. Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. 
Paul says, you have no business. I have no business judging people who are outside. That's God's business. Our role is to teach the people inside the church, teach them correctly, disciple them, grow them so that they become more and more like Jesus. That's our business, right? But people outside the church, it doesn't make sense. And, and, and in any case, that's not how you do it, all right? And this is what James says. When we read the Bible, you have to know that the Bible is given for a reason. And that reason is not so that we can use it to bash people with it. Listen to what James says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away, immediately forgets what he looks like. What is James saying? James is saying the Bible is to be a mirror for whom? It's for us. It's not a window for us to look out from to judge other people. I have two chairs here. As far as I'm concerned, this way, this is a, I call it the judgment seat, all right? The judgment seat. So many Christians sit on this type of seat and just we just point fingers to people. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this. You're breaking God's law. In any case, you know, people without the knowledge of the Bible, people who are not Christians, how, do I, how are they supposed to know? What is right and what is wrong? It's like if, if a French person, for example, comes to you and say, hey, how come you don't speak French? What would you say to that person? Because I don't. You know, how do you expect me, an Australian, to speak French? It doesn't make sense, right? And what happens if, for example, your Hindu friends, right? If they come to you and they tell you, you know, our Holy Bible, the Bhagavad Gita says, you shall not eat beef. It's holy cow. You cannot eat beef. Would you stop eating burger because someone from another religion based on their Bible tells you that you should not suppose, you're not supposed to eat beef? Would you do it? Of course not, right? Because we don't believe in their Bible. That's exactly what we do to people. And this is, this is what we do. You don't, please, I beg you, do not do this. Do not do this. I got this from the internet. You know, you can always get anything from the internet these days, right? But it is so true, isn't it? Instead of using the Bible as a mirror, this is where you should take your seat. It's the mercy seat. So you look at the Bible and you realize, man, I'm just as a sinner as anybody in this world. And God has treated me with kindness. God has treated me with respect, with forgiveness, with mercy, with patience, with all sorts of things that I was hoping for God would do for me. And I got that from God. I received that from God. And in the same way, now that I know what God has done for me, I need to extend that same grace, that same mercy, that same patience, that same long-suffering forgiveness to others as well. You know, if you expect this from God, why would you do something totally different to your neighbor? So the bottom line is this. To be the church, we need to stop judging people and start loving them with the love of Jesus Christ. With the love of Jesus Christ. How does it work out? At the end of the day, words are only words unless you are able to apply it to your life. And I believe the future of our church... You know, the people of Canning, they're not impressed with our building. I don't think. If I were a non-believer, I wouldn't be impressed with a building. In fact, sometimes building puts me off. But you know what I'd be impressed with? I'd be impressed with the people in it. If the people in it show the love of Jesus, if the people in it show kindness and mercy and grace toward me, I'll be totally attracted to that. So just because you're a busy business person, just because you think, you know, I'm just a housewife, I'm just a student, there's nothing that I can do. You know, I know I need to be the church, but how do I be the church with my daily activities, with my busyness, with, with, with what I have to do? Listen to what Paul says in Romans 12, and I love the message version of this. Paul says, after you know the grace of Jesus Christ, Romans 1 to 11, he talks about how gracious Jesus is to all of us. So here's the application of it. In Romans 12, Paul says, here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. That's the real church. 
you know, giving money, yeah, that's an offering as well. You know, say, so yeah, that's an offering. But your life is actually the actual worship. It's an actual offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out readily. Recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unfortunately for most of us Christians, God is not in our radar from Monday to Saturday. God is on our ra radar only on Sunday. And we forget all about God when we come to work, when we go to school, when we do what we do, we think we have no influence, we think we have no power, we think we have no authority. I love that song that we sang. You have been given the authority. Miracles can happen simply because of the words that you say. Do you know that? You know, life can be changed simply because of your investment, because you attend someone's birthday party and, and say words of encouragement to them. Do you know you have that kind of authority and power, church? You got to use it. Stop just going to church, start being the church. You know, we are so privileged that in our midst, we have uh, many young friends from the USA visiting us. I don't know how many of them, they're sitting over there. Can you just wave your hands? Yeah, come on, let's welcome them. I want to invite their, one of their leaders, Ian, onto the stage. Um, they're from what used to be known as Campus Crusade for Christ, and, and they're on a mission trip. Right, Ian? Yeah, um, yeah. You want to tell us what you do here and, and, and what's your plan for the rest of the time? Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to start with, it's actually interesting that you say uh, to the ends of the earth because uh, from where we're from, Perth is literally the farthest city we could possibly go. Uh, it's absolute opposite side of the globe, so uh, funny. Um, yeah, we, we are here because um, we, have, we have 19 people. Jesus has changed our life. Uh, that's, that's it. We, we're on a mission trip, but it's not because we are special Christians. It's not because, um, I mean, I wouldn't even say each of us that are gifting is in sharing the gospel. Uh, but we're here because uh, Jesus has encountered us where we're at. We realize that we are in need of a Savior yeah. and that we need grace. Yeah. And um, the founder of Crew, Bill Bright, used to say, what's the greatest thing that has happened in your life? And if that answer is that you came to know Jesus, what's the greatest thing that you could do for another person? Wow. Wow. Um, so we've, we've been going to Curtin, UWA, ECU, Joondalup, um, and we have been meeting students, talking with them personally. Um, uh, the Bible says that we are Christ's ambassadors, making a plea on his behalf. We, yeah. we have this ministry of reconciliation that we are, wow. we are talking with them uh, to show them the love of Christ, but then to preach the message or to share with them that Christ desires that they be reconciled to him, yeah, that they, so they know him. Um, and so, I mean, we, we've... It's a four-week trip, um, and so, I mean, that's one of the first things I told people when we were coming is, like, we're not going to change the world necessarily in four weeks, um, but we are here because, um, like, Australia, the rocks, we, we love you, too. Um, wow. Revelations, there's this passage that talks about uh, the church of Christ in heaven, and it's every tribe and every tongue and every nation coming before worshiping. Uh, the King of Kings, and uh, something on our heart is that God is best glorified when every culture, every ethnicity so is worshiping Him together, and so we are here because, uh, well, <laughs> to put it, like, we want to know Christ more fully, and, and that's the thing, too, is, like, we are, what we're doing is we are on campuses talking to students, sharing the gospel, but we know that God doesn't need us. Yeah. Um, we are not particularly good instruments. <laughs> um, but his spirit is powerful, and he desires to use us to That's show right. us who he is. That's right. Um, and that, that is why it's our joy to go out, because we get to see every day just a little bit more 
of Jesus. So By taking good. a step of faith, we see just a little bit more. So good. Um, so to end off, like, uh, to share a couple numbers, uh, throughout our trip, just the last few weeks, we've gotten to talk to you over uh, 480 students wow. uh, about spiritual things. We, we've got to meet them, to get to know them, to, to hear about their life, their culture, everything, and uh, to actually personally engage them about what they believe. And uh, for a lot of people, it sounded like that's never really happened, that someone sat down face to face and actually talked with them about that. Of those spiritual conversations, uh, we got to actually personally share the gospel 160 times. Wow. Um, and the Bible sometimes shares numbers about fish, about other things, but we share numbers because numbers are people. That's right. Um, so thank you, The Rocks, for having us here. And uh, we just say, if, if you want to pray for us, pray for the people who are still here on campuses. Um, we'll be traveling back starting Tuesday, but pray for the people who are still here. Um, we're partnering with Power to Change. It's an organization on universities that does the same thing. It, uh, the people there try to share with students the gospel and then build them up so that they can do the That's same good. for the people around them. That's so so. Good. Thank Th you so much, Ian. Would you just stand here and we're going to pray for you. Um, I want to ask one last important question. Yeah. Have you tried Vegemite? I have. I have. Actually, uh, when I was about seven, we had a culture day in <laughs> elementary school and I was, I was horrified. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, and then they told me that like people, people in Australia don't really like peanut butter, which was astounding. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they were wrong with that, but I always thought it was just a one-for-one one trade, Vegemite for peanut butter. But. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. You know, they came here on their own. We didn't invite them. We didn't know they came here two weeks ago, and now they're here again. And you know, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe you and your team are here to encourage us as a church so that we can be better at being the church. And we're here to encourage you as well and to believe in you that God has something great in store for all of you as you move forward in your faith journey together. So we're here to mutually encourage one another. And I don't believe for a second that any of you belongs to this church by coincidence either. You know, I believe you're here for a reason, for such a time as this. You know, ask yourself, why do I attend this church? Why am I here at this time? I believe God has a, has a special plan for your life as well, all right? So would you bow with me and, and, and pray for Ian and the team as they go to Sydney and move, uh, go back to their country, that they will constantly presence the leading, the presence of God in their life so that they can make a huge impact in their world, all right? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for Ian and the team. Thank you, God, how encouraging his testimony is for all of us. Lord, all of us need to learn, learn to be better at being the church where we are every day in the place that you have placed us. Thank you so much, God. I want to pray blessings on the team as they move on with their journey. I trust that their future is bright with you. Empower them even more with the power of the Holy Spirit so that they can be bold in sharing their faith. They can be an influence, uh, not just for their own little community. May they be an influence for the country, Lord, for the whole world even. We thank you so much. We're believing for big things from you because we have been given the authority to do this by you. We thank you so much. We believe you. We pray and ask you this in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Give a hand to Ian and the team once again. In fact, why don't you just stand up as we conclude our time together. As I said earlier, you know, if you want to come tonight, it's going to be fantastic. And don't forget to come back for the second part of our series next week. Invite your friends to come. I trust that they will be blessed. You will be blessed. All right. If you need any prayer for whatever reason, please come forward. Our prayer leaders will be pray. Will be standing here. They would love to pray with you and for you. Um, and outside, would you say hi to our new friends uh, when, you, when you see them and encourage them? Um, give them money if you want. I don't know. Like, do whatever. Um, all right. Uh, it is a custom in our church to be released by receiving a prayer of blessing. So if you have the faith to receive it, why don't you open your hands as an act of dependence on our God. Father God, thank you so much for your presence in our midst this morning. God, as we go from this place, may your blessings follow after us. 
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us wherever we go. May we be the church in our family, in our community, in our workplace, wherever you have placed us. May Jesus' light shine so brightly in our speech, in our behavior, so that the whole world will know that you are the one true God, that Jesus came to this world not to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. May your family be blessed. May your health be blessed. May everything be blessed so that you can be a blessing to the people around you now and forevermore. All God's people who are blessed, say together with me, Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday.